I was scrolling around Facebook the other day, as I want to do for reasons that I can't really even explain to myself, when I was confronted with one of those sad Christian attempts at visualizing their shitty worldview. It's one I've seen before, and you probably have too. It's a, it's a hierarchy of Christian sexism presented as a series of ever more subordinate umbrellas. And, and it's a great reminder that, A, the lives of Christians are an unmitigated hellscape, and B, they suck at visual aids. So if you haven't seen the image, let me paint the picture in your head real quick. Now, there's a thousand versions of it, but this is the one I see most often. There's four umbrellas all on the same shaft. So already it doesn't make any fucking sense. There's a really big one at the top, and each one down is smaller than the last. The top one says Christ, of course, because like if you think about him as a real guy for a fucking second, he's the most arrogant piece of shit you've ever heard of. Now, below that, there's a slightly smaller umbrella canopy that says husband. Below that, a slightly smaller canopy that says wife and an even smaller one below that with children on it. And, and just in case you're not getting the message, the whole image is labeled biblical order of the family. Now, think about what a stupid fucking image this is. Just from an image perspective, why would you have littler canopies below bigger ones on an umbrella? Right? Is that in case like a storm slides in below the top one? If the top canopy is working, the other ones are just always going to be dry unless you turn the damn thing sideways. And isn't that admitting way more than they want with their visual aid? Right? Like, after all, if you actually had the omnipotent, omniscient God of the universe who loves you protecting your ass, why the fuck would dad need a gun collection? Why would you need locks on your doors even? Unless Christ is a leaky umbrella, the rest of this apparatus is just decorative. But wait, there's more. Again, bunch of versions of this, but the one that I'm working from also includes a few of the family responsibilities each participant in the hierarchy is expected to fulfill. Uh, well, almost. There's actually no responsibilities for Christ at all. His mere presence fulfills his end of the contract, apparently. But below husband, it lists three responsibilities. It says protect family, lead the family, provide for family. Below the wife canopy, it says comfort, teach, nurture. And below children, they've got love parents, obey parents. And I don't need to tell you that every fucking one of those is a terrible thing to present as an absolute. Let's start at the top here. The idea that the husband is going to provide for the family is antiquated for way more reasons than just the sexism, right? Very few families are in a position where one person can take care of all the financial needs. And the only reason men have an advantage over women in this one is because of the gender wage gap. And yet... This idea is so ingrained that men in this culture are driven to suicidal levels of depression when their wives make more money than them. I've talked to women who refused promotions or quit jobs to placate their husbands' egos in this regard. And the idea that a penis is the only qualification you need to claim leadership in literally every fucking situation is such a recipe for disaster it once gave us President Donald Trump. But the prescribed roles for the wife are no better. You know, sure, some women are great at comforting, teaching, and nurturing. Others, not so much. But worse than that is the idea that this somehow absolves the husband from all of those responsibilities. Right? I mean, even conservative Christian dads still teach their kids shit, by and large. But holy shit at all the serial killers they've churned out with their phobia about comforting and nurturing. And then we get to, in my opinion, the worst advice on the fucking chart. At the very bottom, it tells children that their chief responsibilities are to love and obey their parents. And keep in mind, this isn't being communicated as a company policy or as good advice from a motivational poster. This is being handed down on high by God himself to brains that haven't yet developed the ability to question what they're being told. Any responsible human being would be tossing in all kinds of caveats on that, right? Like obey your parents unless they tell you to X, Y, or Z. But Christianity is all about the absolute. So come hell or high water, you have to obey them and you have to love them, too, which is somehow even worse. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my parents. I'm sure most of you do, too. But I also know some of you who don't. I know plenty of you whose parents don't deserve your love or your forgiveness or your time. And yet almost all of you still want to love them. Right. The idea that you should always love your parents no matter what cruel shit they've done to you is the source of probably 50 percent of the terrible, sad stories in my inbox. Having abusive parents or parents that reject you because of your religious beliefs, your gender identity or your sexual orientation is already bad enough without the overwhelming societal pressure to reconcile with them or to love them anyway. So, yeah, no surprise. Literally every fucking word and image on the Christian chart for how to be a good family is wrong, misguided, stupid, or some combination of the three. 
In fact, I have to share one last detail on the image because the stupidity of it annoys the hell out of me. Immediately below the children canopy is the fucking handle. <laughs> so apparently you have to hold this contraption straight up in the air if you're using it or something. I don't know. So yet again, they've accidentally got something in their dumbass image right and it's not something they wanted to admit, right? When you use the biblical order of the family, there's no room left over for your head.